Hey team, what up? It's Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q, and today I'm gonna be throwing together an overnight brisket video for you. I got the uh, Green Mountain Grill fired up already. This is the first time I've actually made a brisket for you in my pellet grill. We're gonna be rocking overnight. I got a lot of thrills and challenges in this video. This was supposed to be a long hold rest video. Instead, this brisket took forever and stalled out on me, but uh, best believe your boy got it home. Come on, let's go check it out. Cut the music. We got us a big old 13 and a half, more or less, uh, pound packer, okay? Good old fashioned brisket, nice prime brisket. Grab this one from Costco. Um, we've done this before, however, first time we actually get to do it in my pellet grill. We've done it in my dad's pellet grill a couple times. I've done it at my girl's parents' house. Uh, and I haven't even got it in my own. So we're going to get us a good cook in. I got a nice little something that I want to try out with that long hold plan. First things first, we're going to get this baby out the package. We're going to get it trimmed up, get it cleaned up, nice and pretty. And then uh, we'll get this thing seasoned up. I've already had it sitting out for a while. It was a little uh, getting close to being too cold. So I want to get that closer to the room temp. That won't be that hard out here. The things that I look for when I grab my brisket, this one isn't perfect, but um, I try to find ones that's got a little bit thicker. Um, this is the flat side. That's the point side, the fatty side, the lean side. I try to get a little bit thicker uh, flat side and then try to make sure that for what it's worth, I try to get this as uniform as I can to each other. There's always going to be a drop, but uh, sometimes this can be really thinned out. At the end of the day, we're going to end up turning this corner real tight making this thing more or less more symmetrical more of a big oval egg type of a shape and then uh, we're gonna try to get this thing a little more aerodynamic let me get it out the package we're gonna get off some of this good old hard fat i'll show you what i get rid of and we got it in the house this is out the package i notice i got me a nice thick looking fat cap which is good and it looks like a more or less even uh, uniform size i'm gonna need a little bit of that tallow off of there so i'm gonna be bringing this down to about a quarter of an inch like I was saying, we're going to round this thing off a little bit and get this a little more symmetrical. Get rid of this big hard chunk of fat off of here, this deco. And then uh, we'll be rounding off a little bit of this point area too. This baby feels nice. Good, I don't got no gouges in there. It's going to be us a good brisket right here. I feel good about this one here. Let me start the clean up. All right, I'm pretty decent, man. You know, you can play around with these things for a while. It becomes therapeutic at some points, but uh, I think it's respectful. I got this thing kind of rounded off, as you can kind of get it start to see. Uh, this is going to go to the side, my scrap pack for my brisket meat. I don't, I'm not afraid these days, as you can see, of trimming off a little bit more. Keep in mind that you do want to keep some of that good fat on there, you know what I mean? When you're doing sausage, you're going to end up wanting something like a 60-40 about 60 40 ratio or something like that of meat to fat. So I like to make sure I keep a little bit of both. That's going to get broke down for some tallow. Yeah, Let's flip this big baby over. So we got to pat him down a little bit, but uh, here we go. We round it off the edges a little bit. So I got Came around, took off just a little bit of that... Uh, back in there in that point got rid of a lot of that extra excess fat uh this thing should be ready to go got rid of that little thing there didn't want too too much of a crater and this is going to be uh another one for a party so i'm gonna need all the meat that i can get so i'm gonna leave that on there i think this is about ready to go let me transfer this to the pan we will get this thing seasoned up so now that i got this thing in the pan uh, I'm going no binder i'm keeping this thing pretty easy i'm starting on the fat side because that's how i wanted to um end up more or less on my meat side i'm going with my as i got on here the af brisket brub that's that aaron franklin so i think uh the one that john lewis kind of dropped his little secret on what he uses and uh, a lot of people think that's what they used back when they were there so as far as what i'm putting in here you got eight parts of pepper three parts of lowry seasoning salt three parts of kosher salt and one part of garlic powder so this thing's already ready to go 
and I like using that granulated garlic powder. That way it's not too thin. So actually granulated garlic versus garlic powder. Anyway, I'm about to cover this thing really good. Pat it all around. Don't forget your size. Flip it over. Get the other side. And this is going to hang out. I'll let you see it before it goes on to the pit, but at least another half hour. And there it is. Nothing too crazy. Don't be afraid of this rub. At the end of the day, it's not that much seasoning, even though you want this baby cover every square inch. The majority of this rub is going to be pepper. You won't come out too salty, but it sure will be flavorful, okay? So once again, I give it to you. Eight parts black pepper, three parts of lari seasoning salt, three parts of kosher salt, and one part of granulated garlic. All right, let me get my smoker up to temp. So we at the proving grounds. We got this thing's been sitting out the whole time. Even brought it outside and covered it up for a second just so it can start coming up to a little bit more of the room temp. Like I said, we on the old pellet grill today. So I got the Green Mountain cleaned up, fired up, ready to go. Rocking my Costco pellets with that beautiful blend. Today we're going to be rolling at 250. And we're just going to go ahead and get this thing on. I like going fat side down. I found a lot of times that I was... Uh, having way too much get this one over here it's usually my warmer area get that over there for that tallow and i should be able to situate that brisket right over there and i kind of put the flat at the back and we're gonna rotate it along the way get out of there fly and uh we'll go from there all right so we got it on there always take that time let that meat come up to room temp i tell you what just picking it up you can just feel how much more loose it was it's gonna be closer to tender like i said this is where i wanted it to be this side is a little closer over here towards the old uh air pipe so i feel like it's a little bit cooler my heating elements more there in the middle and towards this side so we'll let that uh tallow get formed over there nice and quick and right now we'll kind of slide you over here so my plan is this is going to be hanging out nothing crazy nothing to do i'll bring you back at a, probably about the three hour mark or something like that once we solidify this bark a little bit uh we'll come in maybe start giving it a little bit of spritz but other than that it should be smooth and easy uh it's another nice and warm night out here in az so let's get to uh checking out this old brisket it's been about three and a half hours hey baby how you doing over here it smells beautiful out here it's starting to bark up a little bit, look a little dry. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of spritzing. Give it a little life. I'm doing nothing crazy on the spritzing, just uh, some 50-50 uh, apple cider vinegar with uh, water. Just give it a little moisture. It's gonna be a long night, so I wanna make sure you're good. I don't know, you know, a lot of times I've uh, seen people and I know for myself, I remember it was part of what ended up making me start to uh, cook fat side down was because I was on my pellet grill a long, long time ago. And um, I ended up with that crusty bottom. And uh, I find that I believe most of that heat comes from radiates from the bottom. You know, I'm sure too, the aluminum foil probably helps, but just in general, the heating element, excuse me, is down there. So I think that uh, kind of contributed to me starting to do uh, meat side up and then since then once I tried it I liked it that's usually my way of rolling do it however you like you know your grill better than I do but uh, this is usually what works for me I want to make sure I keep some moisture on here though like I said it's gonna be a long cook and I want to make sure this comes out good four and a half hours and we coasting right along it started to smell like meat out here I don't know if that's more of the tallow I've been pouring that off little by little uh, get this little brisket, another spritz. Now, um, let's think about this. This was a, what, 13.65 pound brisket. If I had to guess, I'd say I cut off at least about four pounds between the meat and the fat. So, this is probably somewhere between an eight and nine pound brisket that we got in here now. It still looks pretty big to me, so I'm going closer to nine. My guess is this is going to probably be somewhere around an eight-ish hour cook, eight hour cook, something like that. Whatever. We'll see how it goes, but uh, anyway, what I'm getting at is four and a half hours, I'm probably about halfway through my cook. So what I'm going to do is I want to rotate this thing, put this point, even though I'm assuming it's more towards my hotter spot there in the grill. Um, I'm just going to give it a flip just to kind of give me some good even cooking. This thing will be moving all around before it's said and done. Just about six hours in, still holding strong. If you can see that over there at that old 250. Uh -huh. Let's take a peek in here at this brisket. I did rotate it in here since I believe you saw it last. 
I can see it weeping a little bit, so that's good. It's starting to bark up nicely. As a matter of fact, let me try cutting on a light for you. Leave the light on. You know how we do it. Uh, turn that light on for you. A little dry. Let's get a spritz on that. Pardon my reach. Looking good, looking good. This baby ain't nowhere close to being done. I mean, beginning, first things first, I'm cooking the color right now. It ain't nowhere close to the color I want. I'm not really caring about the temp. Then I'll make sure I can get it nice and tender. All right, so I skipped you a little bit of the fun. We already popped it up to 275. It's eight and a half hours later, middle of the night. I could still get some more tallow out of there if I wanted to, but uh, that right there, that's a pretty, that's a good amount, more than enough that I need for the day. That liquid, liquid gold right there, got a little smoke on it. That's definitely gonna help us out. Let's take a peek. All right, yeah, it's doing what we want. It's doing what we want. Let me see, I see itself facing over here. My bark still ain't the way I want it to be yet. Just out of curiosity. Let's just see where we at on temp. My guess is around once. Uh, that beat me out. I was thinking I was thinking around 165. Something like that. 175. So it's close to the temp, but it's not quite to the bar that I want. I'm about to give it another rotation. And uh, pull this back in. Let's see where this point is at. Probably lower. Yep. I'm about to pull it over there towards the hot spot. And I'm gonna let this thing rock out at least another hour or so. And we'll come back and check it out before we uh, get it in there and we wrap it up tonight. Still chugging along, it's about five in the morning. Still holding that 275. And just so you can see, man, I'm still holding strong in pellets. It's not going through that much. Let's take a peek. Hey, yeah, now we looking a lot better. Sparks looking a little more solidified. We can probably get the rest of that here in a little bit. But definitely now we've got more of the color I was looking for. Let's see what we got. Perfect. Let me get this out of here. Let's get this thing wrapped up. Get one more spritz. I'll show you how we're going to get this thing to the finish line. Back inside. I want to give you a look at this um, brisket without all that outside light. And uh, you can see my next thought process. So, color's not too bad. I got a couple spots over here where my brisket or my bark was actually able to set. But you can see where some of the weeping went on. And um, obviously it's not as pretty as I would have loved it to have been. But it's going to show you how we're going to make that crispy later on. So I'm not too worried about that. But initially I had planned that I was going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up with um, butcher paper. And uh, add in some of that tallow. Instead, because of the way that this bark is forming, and I'm really not that far off, but I still got another couple, maybe 25 degrees to, to go or something like that, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to the foil boat method. The reason I'm going to the foil boat, I'm still trying to speed up this cook. Hopefully, I don't overly dry this thing out, um, but I do want to go ahead and try to preserve my bark and let that keep going as long as I can. I damn near thought about letting it keep going on the rack, but... I'm going to go ahead and go this route. So we're going with the foil boat. Still going to hit it with some tallow. We're getting this baby back out there with a probe. All right, so we got it on this uh, double heavy duty uh, aluminum foil over here. It's going to be real simple. Basically all I'm going to do is kind of scrunch this baby up until I at least go about halfway up. Partially cover it without, with exposing the top of it still. Kind of give me a uh, drop top look. Something like that is what we're going to end up with. Don't got to be absolutely perfect, but we want to try to keep it up tight. And then go at least, uh, you know, over the lower parts of the ridge and at least halfway up, whatever have you. We're just going to get a nice little boat to sit this baby in, nice little tray, and allow this whole top to still sit there and get darker. But it should speed that cook up a little bit and still protect us a little bit on the bottom. So next, I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little bit of tallow.
Perfect. This baby is nice and hydrated, as you can see, glistening back all over again. I'm going right back out there, point side towards what I believe is my hot side in the back of my pit, and we're gonna get a probe in this baby and finish it up. All right, we got this baby back on. Like I said, point side towards my warmer side. Uh, threw me my little probe in, more or less in the middle, kind of between the pot, uh, the flat and the point. Right now, I'm registering. Uh, it looks a little high. It was just at about 175. It's adjusting back. I'm gonna be leaving this thing in here and we're gonna finish it out as is. I'll bring you back when it's more closer to that time. Hey team, I wanna jump in here real quick and let you know thanks for following along on today's cook. If you're new to the channel, go to the bottom right corner, make sure that you subscribe, check out some of the other videos you've missed. And for everybody else that's been here, I appreciate you. We are over 2000. With that said, we're on to the next go and on to the next cook. Let's go. Oh, we back. 12 hours and 40 minutes we still aren't quite there but let's take a peek oh yeah i think the foil bulb was a good choice you can see the way this bark is set up this is what i wanted to get to pretty much cleaned up that area a lot looks a lot better uh, nice and solidified let me check out the temp so I hit the back of it with about a 186-ish, 187. The front's about five degrees in front of that. So one way or another, we ain't out there yet, baby. But uh, we look pretty good. Hit it with just a little bit of that tallow. We're gonna close this thing up quick, fast, and let it keep doing what it's doing. 14 hours. That is why you budget in extra time. Let me tell you, a lot longer than I was thinking it was gonna take, but sometimes it's like that, different pieces of meat. That was a decent sized one. Let's see where we at. Man, this look absolutely beautiful. Come on now. Where we at? That's feeling soft. Feeling soft. Still not home yet. Still 185 ish over there. A little tight there for sure. Your yeah, baby is stalling. We work through it. All right, I got a little more energy under my belt now. Got me a couple little hours of Z's here and there. I'm reading off at 207. This has been a 15 hour cook. Sometimes you never know. Sometimes you never know. Let me show you a little bit of what I did to kind of speed things up along the way. After we got off, pretty much now, it says I'm at 27, but I'm really just trying to make sure that I'm pro tender all the way around. Pretty much what I did was it was going pretty slow, getting me a late stall. And I took that whole foil boat, there it is, hello, and sat it right on off in there. Look at all of that juice coming up out of there. Now, uh, let me get this up here, pardon my reach. Okay, now one thing I will say is I tried to make sure that I tinted it over the top. So that way that the foil didn't actually touch my bark, so I didn't want to kill that. You can tell that it's definitely softened up, but it's going to stiffen right back up. So let me just get a couple spots in here. Okay, that feels a lot better from where that was at before. Definitely nice in the middle. Point is very nice. And what I'm going to do is, this baby's actually going to rest sitting outside today. I mean, hell, it's already a hundred and something degrees, so I'll let it come down a little bit in temp and pretty much go from there. Change that plan. I brought this baby inside because I forgot. I do not want to have to put no cover on top of it, so I'm going to let it sit right inside my oven. I'm not going to turn it on until I actually uh, notice that it comes down to about 170. After that... I want to wrap it up and then get its uh, hold started with a little bit of this tallow that's already here in the bottom. We'll just kind of rebase it and let it chill out. Like I said, it's bright. That brisk is reading at about 178, still sitting over there in the oven. Oven's not on, of course. 
it is a hundred already, hundred plus out here, damn near. The sun is blazing, so this is what I'm finna do. I'm gonna grab that brisket. We're gonna plop it down here. You see, I got me a little bit of aluminum foil. Uh, I'm gonna put it in there and basically give it a fresh wrap over with that uh, in the tallow that's already in there. I'll go ahead and pour it right back over the top, wrap it up nice and tight, roll it up in this old towel, and it's gonna sit right here in my uh, cooler, right out here in the sun. And this is gonna be my uh, rest area. There's that brisket out of the or in the light. One thing I like, look at that nice little jiggle. Yeah, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Got my long spatula, like I always tell you, easy to move big pieces of meat like this, make a nice and easy transfer over. One thing I'm already happy about, my bottom ain't hard, it ain't crusty. Always gotta make sure of that. Bark looks great. Tasting this juice, man. Goodness gracious, boy, look at that. You see that darkness? Look at all of that flavor in there with that tallow. This right here, man, that's, that tastes like something you can dip your steak in. All right, wrap it up. Mm, mm, mm. Rehydrate it. Let's get it package. We got everything squared away. We was able to break that cook from it being at 200. Now we're going into the old resting spot. It's going to hang out there for the next four or five hours. Did end up being a long haul, but I tell you what, we got another brisket that's about to be money. Finally, let's get to work here. This baby has been resting in a cooler, wrapped up in a towel for about the last eh, five hours, something like that. I really haven't kept that much track. It's been a lot of moving pieces, but uh, I can tell you what, it feels nice and tender up under here. And I'm looking forward to getting this baby up out the package. We already saw how juicy it was. I got my nephews over here. I got some true taste testers. Oh yeah. Come on now. We're gonna be all right. Let me switch this onto the cutting board and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what we got here. We got nice solidified bark. I can see that. I still got some good jiggle. Let's chop this thing up. And now we got it out the package. This baby smell nice and beefy. Like I said, bark is nice and solidified. I'm happy we did what we did to get to where we at right now. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and get a chop, eh, more or less down the middle-ish towards the back end of the flat and right where the point will be at, starting to add in. And let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Hopefully I got that on cam. Beautiful smoke ring, nice and juicy. As you can clearly see. I'm happy with that. Let's see what the point look like. Oh, I can feel the point under my fingers wanting to break up. Check that out. It's so bright out here, I can barely see, hopefully, what you see. But I already know, if you see what I'm seeing, we good. Uh, off the pellet grill. A lot of people say they can't get that smoke ring on the pellet grill. All right, let me give me a couple slices, man. I got taste testers on deck. I got family ready to eat. Niece is back there having a great time. We got to make this happen. Let's get a couple respectfully thin slices cut. It's nice and tender. I can tell that already just from the cut through. This knife of mine is a decent knife, but I mean, I ain't got nothing special. But uh, I'm coming through this thing with no effort, no problems. Chop through the bark. The one thing I always be careful of, I told you I had that issue a long time ago on the pellet grill with the end coming up or the bottom coming up real uh, crunchy. And I've seen that from a lot of people. That is part of the reason I go fast side down to get that protection. But uh, we ain't got none of that. This baby is straight jiggling, as you can see. Let's just grab one of these up out of here. Check out that bend test, right? And the next thing we want to do is we want to try to do that brake test. No effort. A little bit of fat still on there for the people that like it. And now let me get that taste test. Woo! We in, baby. We in. Let me chop some more of this up for the peoples. And then uh, we're going to chase that point. All right, we back in action. We got that pretty much cut up. I'm a fan of, oh, I want to lose all my little flat pieces, but, uh, man, they came out great. Like I said, let's grab another one up out of there. 
nice and moisture. Literally, they've been sitting outside in a cooler. They still got this much wetness in them. Beautiful smoke ring, bark's holding strong, great bend. I ain't mad at that at all. So this point, yeah, I can tell it's nice and done. Hopefully, I'm gonna move it around just to hopefully make sure I catch this camera. It is nice and glistening. I'm liking the way that this has come out so far as well. Let's get some slices of that. I'm gonna put this one down so it doesn't over oxidize. Point slices to be a little thicker. The fatty. This is the side I like to make my tacos out of. Or whenever I gotta do some kind of reheat and it goes into a different dish, I like to use this side and use my slices for straight up eat. Uh. Oh yeah, I got my girls back. Yeah. Nieces, my, they all ready to eat more. My daughter, check that out. That's the fatty. Let me taste just a little, little bit of that. How was it, girls? Good. All right. There it is. Go ahead, little baby. You can have it. The whole thing. I know. That's a lot, huh? Yeah. And those are good, huh? There we go. I make sure all of y'all get a little bit of the point with the bark. All the good stuff. Yo, uh, sister is requesting a chicken a taste tester. A taste tester? I promise her. We looking good. Let me chop up the rest. We'll get to the end and we're going to check it all out. Hey, what up fam? We back. We got that brisket cook out the way. As you can hear, I do not own the rights to this music. There's a whole lot going on. I got the family here. We enjoying the pool day. Got my nieces here. Got my daughter here. Whole lot of family. My sister. Beautiful time. My brisket is already gone, so I ain't got nothing I'll sit out here with and have no taste with. But let's talk about this cook. You talking about 15 hours plus of me being out there on that pellet grill. Not the old Lone Star. We need a different cook on this one. But on the pellet grill for over 15 hours, that thing gave me no problems. It held temps the whole time. I respect that for what it's worth. Also, for what it's worth. Working with that brisket, one of the number one things I was worried about is ending up with a bottom that gets hard. I've had that happen before on the pellet grill. It was nice being able to make sure that I do that fat side down, give me a little bit of protection, allowed me to go ahead and let that thing base the way it was supposed to. At the end of the day, I was able to come out with the product I want, but as you saw, that was not the cook that I had planned for y'all. I planned on trying to do one of those long holds, probably seven to 10 hours and I wanted to have everything ready right on time for this party. Instead, that cook took way longer than I thought it would, and I ended up having to wrap where I was thinking that I might not even wrap. I initially planned on wrapping and putting that thing in butcher paper with some um, tallow all over it, but once I saw the way my bark was looking, I wasn't necessarily satisfied with it. So instead, we reverse pivot, we went with the foil boat method, left that thing open, allowed that bark to keep on taking more punishment, and with that said, it still took a long time, but I got to the bark that I was looking for. So the one thing that I want to make sure that everybody out there knows that I've, I've kind of learned as I've been doing more videos, doing more of these experiments and stuff like that, it is good to have some of those other techniques and understand how they work. Not so much that that's going to be something that you're going to do every time, but you never know when you might need a crutch. You might need the wrap. You might need whether you should, you know, need to know whether you're gonna go with aluminum foil and wrap it or whether you wanna go with uh, butcher paper and wrap it if you got a cheaper brisket or whatever have you. If you was gonna do one of those long holds, definitely I would say you want a better brisket because it has more intermuscular fat and you'll get more rendering and you'll be able to not dry out so much. So definitely I wouldn't try that with a select. Uh, maybe not even a choice unless it's a good one, but definitely like a prime or a wagyu or something. I think that's prime. But at the end of the day, one thing that has continued to show you and show me is if you cook it right, if you do the basic steps, and if you know what you're doing, 
it's gonna come out okay. You might have to train, uh, change up and transition the way that you plan on actually getting that cook done, but there's more than enough ways to actually come out with some good cooks here in the backyard when you try to make something perfect for the family. At the end of the day, that foil boat gave me the uh, brisket covering that I like, gave me a nice bark that I wanted. Instead, otherwise, I would've ended up probably with a nice mushy bark. And then after that, we went ahead and went into that aluminum foil just to make sure that I was able to keep all my moisture. I had that thing sitting out here in the middle of this 100 degree weather in my cooler, which I left wide open. It stayed hot as hell. And at the end of the day, it was able to continue that rendering process, keep me in there close to around 160, 170 degrees that whole time. And you saw when I actually sliced that thing down, it was still running with juices. I had my nieces, I had my daughter running up to the table time and time after again just to get some more meat, when truthfully, they don't even eat a whole lot of meat. So I respect that, I love that, and that's what I did it for. At the end of the day, we got another cook down, another one for y'all to check out. I appreciate all y'all, the family that's always watching, wherever you might be, Black Smoke Barbecue, and everybody else has been looking out for your boys since I done got this thing started. Big shout out to my peoples over there at Black Smoke and Barbecue. We're going to keep this thing rolling, and I'll catch y'all next week. Peace. In aftermath. Hey, man, you know, I tell you, it's a good feeling when you see your family happy. You got, you know, I got my daughter in there. I got my nieces in there. At the end of the day, my sister up in there, wifey in there, everybody eating good, everybody quiet. That's the reason we do this. And when you leave and the cutting board still look like that, you got yourself a juicy brisket. I'ma holler at y'all like I told you before. Holler at me.